Okay. Hi. It's me. I'm Mr. Jeevan. I will be guiding you all and wishing to help you all to your SPM journey for this physics paper. So basically, most of the time, students have all these questions in their head as you can see okay how do i study the subject is this formula important is that formula important how do i understand this graph uh, is this theory important is that theory important okay uh, when do i have to write this do i have to write this definition in full okay so these are basically most of the uh, things that you face and it's difficult i understand that okay so i have compiled a few slides for y'all okay this is basically going to serve as an online study guide based on my teaching experience and i hope that this study guide can help you basically uh, change your mindset on the difficulty level that you think this uh, subject has okay so now uh in order uh for the first what you need to know okay for the spm exam you need the what I call five plus one elements of physics to score that A plus. Okay, so I'm not a Naruto fan, by the way. Uh, I just like that five elements thingy. Now, what are these five elements? Okay, it's five five plus one elements. Okay, so it's five, and then you got a one element basically at the end. So what are these five elements? Now, in physics for your SPM exam, okay. The five elements are basically is basically made up of definitions. Now you have to understand that the definitions are an important aspect of physics. Okay, so your SPM paper, your paper one, paper two, paper three, you're gonna see these definition questions spread out throughout the whole three papers. So do you need to memorize them? Yes, you need to memorize them. Okay, so one tip: write the definitions. Write and write and write until you get it in your head. Okay. The next element is your graph and relationships. Now, without the graph, you don't have a relationship. Without the relationship, you don't have a graph. So it's very simple. The graph carries at least four to five marks. So when I'm talking about a graph, most of the students, I mean most of us, we can basically draw back the graph. Okay, so it's understandable. But usually, what you guys face, the problem that you guys face is the axis. In physics, the axis for the graph is very important. I need to know what the y-axis stands for. I need to know what the responding variable stands for. I need to know what the manipulated variable stands for. The units, the symbols that we use for the quantities. All these are basically important aspects of a graph. Applications. The next, the third element. Applications and factors. Okay. And then you got diagrams. From normal diagrams, then to your experimental diagrams. And the last one, the formula. Because the formula is really important. So do I have to memorize the formulas? Yes. The paper in front of the exam got formula what? Okay. If you say in BM sometimes, kertas dekat depan itu, cikgu kata dah ada formula. So I do not need, tak payah hafal. Well, it's just wrong. Okay. So you have to memorize. Kena hafal. Tak ada pilihan. Okay. Tak ada pilihan. And why is it important? Daripada formula ni, kita dapat buat satu kaitan. Okay. We are able to relate the variables using that formula so once i will be doing a next uh, video on how to basically use the formulas to actually help you relate and from the formulas basically help you get the units because as you know the answers without units in the paper two in your paper two is basically wrong you need to give the answer with the correct unit for your paper two and paper three so these are basically the five elements okay five elements that you need to have it locked in your head for each and every subtopic okay so i'm going to give you an example okay an example now let's say for example okay get an a4 paper how do you use these five elements okay get an a4 paper now i want you to divide the paper into five sections okay so basically you're going to have one column for your definition as you can see one column for your formula one for the experiment and diagrams, another one for the graph and relationship, and another one for your application and factors. Now, do you, you can divide them in, in this manner. And then the topic there, okay? So, let's say for example, I've written here, I got hooks here, okay? So, I got the definition for hooks here, 
the force acting on a spring is directly proportional to the extension of the spring provided it doesn't exceed its elastic limit. Now that's the definition. And then we got the uh, formula here. Okay, so the Hooke's formula is F equals to Kx. And then for that F, you need to know the correct unit, Newton. Okay, for X, the extension of the spring. It will be using meter. And then the K, okay, which is the spring constant, will be using Newtons per meter. Okay, so in my next video, I'm actually going to help you all out on how to get these units. And then, like I said this now, from the uh, formulas, you can actually relate. So basically, uh, the higher the force, the higher the extension. Then if the spring constant value is very high, the spring would experience very less extension. Okay, that is basically some uh, something about the formulas. And then... Um, Factors that affect the spring constant. So spring constant is basically the hardness of a spring. So you got the factors that affect it, the length of the spring, the thickness of the spring, the diameter of the spring, material, the arrangement. Uh, arrangement of the spring either is parallel or series. Okay. And application. Car shock absorbers, uh, the cradle, the spring that we use for the cradle, okay, to cradle a baby. Now that all these are SPM questions. And then your experimental diagram. So you got the full diagram there, fully labeled. And then your graph to show you that F, the force acting on the spring, is directly proportional to the extension of the spring. And then you got that red uh, dot there on the graph that basically shows you your elastic limit. So anything before the elastic limit is directly proportional. Anything after the elastic limit is not directly proportional anymore. Okay. So once again, it does not need to be exactly like this. But I hope you understand the concept by now. Okay. It's... Uh, Basically, an F4 paper broken into five parts, and these are the main elements. I got another example. Okay, so this is another example that you could use. You can take an F4 paper. Basically, you got the the front part and the back part. Okay, so you can take the front part and then break it into the same five things: the definition, formula, and application factors on the front side, and then on the the behind side of it, you can basically put the graph, relationships, and then your diagrams and experiment. Okay, for example. I got another topic here, impulsive force. Uh, so I basically got the definition, impulsive force is the rate of change in momentum. And you got the formula right there. Uh, F equals to MV minus MU over T. And like I said, each of the uh, quantities should have their units. And then from that formula, you are able to relate the impulsive force to the time of impact. And then you got the applications, the safety gear in sports, car, industry, performance aspects of a sport, safety aspects of a sport. And then you got your graphs and relationships there. Uh, impulsive force is inversely proportional to the time of impact. And for impulsive force, you, you, you guys don't do a specific experiment. So, but this diagram basically says it all. Okay, this is a, a very popular SPM question to show you that uh, when the surface is soft, the egg doesn't break. And the surface is hard, the egg, the egg breaks because of the impulsive force acting on the shell of the egg. So this is basically, once again, it does not need to be exactly like this. But you should get the point, the idea that the five elements in physics basically are made up of these five aspects. So for each and every subtopic, when you do your notes, make sure you break that subtopic into these five elements. Compact the notes that you can carry so that you can carry with you anywhere. Start writing. Okay. That leads me to my last element. Okay. What is the last? The plus one element. The last element is write. There is no other way. Attempt the question. Write the essay. Write the structured answer. Get the hang of writing it. Uh, definition wise. Formulas. You, you will understand that. The more you write, the more easier is it for you to you know, express the answer. It removes the fear of attempting a question. So I hope this video basically helps you in guiding you how to approach this physics as a subject. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to basically subscribe. Okay, Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button. And if you think that this helped you, do like and do share it with your friends. And me and my team, again, we are going to post a lot of uh, SPM topical study guides and SPM tips for physics, chemistry and biology. So don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.